GD Vaharja and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to talk to y'all about lenition. Before we do, last time we talked about eclipses and eclipses is adding a letter to the beginning of a word in Irish and that letter will eclipse the original sound of the beginning of the word, changing it. But today we're going to talk about lenition which is similar but very different. Um, before we get into it, I've been working on this off and on for a couple of months now because I really wanted it to be like right and complete and stuff and learn all the rules myself um, before I shared them with y'all. And I thought that there would be like a similar number of rules for lenition as eclipses, but I was wrong <laughs> and there's way more. But once you get them down, it's easy. So we're going to go through it together. So Irish lenition. Sometimes in Irish, we'll need to add an H called a shavu after the initial consonant of the word, changing the sound of the word. So for an example, we've got the word boher, which means road. We'll add an H after the B and it'll change to woher. Um, the B sound changed to a W sound when the H was added. Now we're going to need to look at, um, before we get into the rules about when to use lenition, um, what sound, what new sound is produced um, with each consonant in the Irish alphabet um, when you add an H. So let's go over them. So BH is going to make either a W sound or a V sound. It's going to make a W sound if BH comes before A, O, or U, otherwise known as broad vowels in a word, and it'll make a V sound before an E or an I, otherwise known as slender vowels. CH will make a H sound, like in Bach. That's how it's going to sound in most places, but in Ulster, um, it's going to be a much softer sound, so much so that um, sometimes it'll just sound like an H. <sighs> just depends on like what dialect you speak. Now DH is going to either sound like uh, almost like a gargling sound or Y, yeah, a Y. It'll sound like the gargling sound before A O or U and Y before E or I. FH is completely silent so you ignore both the F and the H and then just say what's left of the word after them. GH sounds identical to DH. It'll sound like R before A, O, or U, and like Y before E or I. MH sounds like a W sound before A, O, or U, and a V before E or I. So that's the exact same rule as BH. PH sounds like an F. We have that in English. PH sounds like an F, like pharmacy. SH will sound like an H. TH will also sound like an H. So below that, you can see I've got the color key there for um, the sound that's made before A or U or before E or I on certain letters when there's an option. And for a GH and KH, I've already like explained them and demonstrated them, but these are guttural sounds, so try making a hard C or a hard G sound without stopping the airflow, like <sighs> And it's important to remember that S, C, S, F, S, M, S, P, and S, T are never lenited. And the consonants L, N, and R are also never lenited. Okay, before we look at the rules about when to apply lenition, um, let's look at one blanket rule for when not to apply it. A common mnemonic for this rule is dentals before dots. Um, that's just something you can remember in your head because it's going to concern all the consonants in the word dentals and all the consonants in the word dots. So here's the rule. If a word ending in D, N, T, L, or S comes before a word ending in D, T, or S, the second word is not lenited even in a situation where it normally would be. Oh, but this does not apply, if you follow the asterisk down, this rule does not apply to attributed 
attributive adjectives. For example, burn yes, a nice woman. You'd think this would be a situation where we wouldn't lenite jess because burn is a word ending in an N and jess begins with a D. But jess, nice, is an attributive adjective describing what kind of woman she is. So we will lenite anyway. Burn yes. So here's some examples of when you would like apply the dentals before dots rule. Gan shukra, without sugar. Um, that's a situation after gan where normally you would lenite, but gan ends with an N and shukra starts with an S, so we'll leave it alone. Untape, the tape. Un, meaning the, ends with an N. Tape starts with the T. We'll just leave it alone. And we've got bracelage, geomont, diamond bracelets. That's a situation where we'd also normally lenite. We'll get to why that is later. Um, but anyway, bracelage ends with a D and geomont starts with a D, so you won't. And I have here, this is a note mostly for anyone who might be just reading this guide without watching the video, um, like on my Instagram or something. But as it is a blanket rule, I have not repeated the dentals before dots rule in the rest of this guide, except in a couple of instances where applying the rule may not be obvious. So be sure to keep a sharp lookout for instances where this could potentially apply. Um, because it would just take up too much room in my guide to like, every time there's a rule where remember to look out for the dentals before dots thing might apply, it would just take up too much room. But I'll try to mention it when I think of it as we're going through it. So when is lenition used? And keep in mind, these rules can definitely vary by dialect. I tried to mostly just stick to um, standard Irish rules. So the first rule where we'll apply lenition is on the indefinite noun. And indefinite means that there's no article meaning the there. So no un or na. On the indefinite noun after the prepositions er, ja, do, fui, gan, ejer, mar, o, rev, har, tri, and um. So for an example, we've got tolen, which means tunnel, but tri, holen, through a tunnel. It comes after the preposition tri, so we'll unite it. But not after er in established phrases. So a not established phrase example here is a reward on a table, but a ball, which means later. Another exception is that you will not lenite after edger when it's used as spatially or temporally between or when you're using it to show difference or opposition. So spatially when you're talking about like physically between something or temporally time-wise when you're talking about between two different times or time events. Okay, so example. Ejer Hotch, Agus Wadri. Both cats and dogs. So Ejer, even though it means between, it can be used to mean both and if used with Agus. So Ejer Halti among students. Like, it's a common secret among students. But you'd have Edger Shalana between shifts. That's two temporal events that you're between. Edger Karki Agus Killarnia between Cork and Killarney. You're like physically between them. And Jiffer Edger Jarig Agus Karkara. The difference between red and purple. That's a difference that you're trying to show there, so you're not going to learn that. And trudge, edger, tig, agus, kian. The fight between tig and kian. So they're in opposition. So you won't win that. Okay, so here is one of the times where I am mentioning the dentals before dots rule again. Because it's something that you may not think of automatically. I know I wouldn't have thought of it. So anyway. And because of DNTLS... Um, you will not lenite on the second of two lenitable nouns after Iger Agus. If 
the word begins with, the second word begins with D, T, or S. So, for example, we have Ejera, I guess, Ua. Both love and hate. But, Ejervil, I guess, Shukra. Both honey and sugar. So, with the first example there, after Agus, we've got Fua, which means hate. It begins with an F, so it's lenitable, and it doesn't um, apply with the dentals before dots thing. So we lenite it, FH becomes silent, Ua. Ijervil Agus Shukra. Agus ends with an S, so Shukra begins with an S. Dentals before dots. You won't lenite shukra. You're also not going to want to lenite um, after um if the word starts with B, P, or T. If the object starts with B, P, or T. So, for example, um bunrian, around a queen. And you won't lenite after har in general phrases such as har bar, which means e the car went by, which means excellent. Another exception um, is that you won't lenite after gone with F words, proper names, infinitive constructions, or when the object has a modifier. So I got an example for each of those. So we got gone via without food. That's a regular example where the lenition rule does apply. But gone find ya without patience. That's an F word, so you won't lenite. Gone Maeve without Maeve. That's a proper noun. That's her name, so we won't lenite. Berlum gone kokorau. I'd prefer not to cook. So you can construct some like infinitive phrases this way, with gone kind of taking the place of not to, and then using kokorau, the verbal noun for to cook, afterward. Together they form not to cook. Gone Kota che, without a warm coat. So if it was just without a coat, gan kota, we would lenite and it would be gan hota. But we're describing the coat as a warm coat, so we won't lenite. Gan kota che. Let's get back to when you will want to lenite. Okay, so you are going to lenite after the preposition slash article the combo words done which is really a word that's a combination of the preposition do which means for plus un which means the for the gen which is a combination of j which means of plus un which means the so of the and su slash sun which is a combination of e plus un so in the the difference between su and sun in the school bus. <laughs> su and sun both mean the same thing. You just use su before consonant sounds and sun before vowel sounds. So here's an example. Kalan, which means puppy, but dunholan for the puppy. But an exception to that rule is with feminine nouns that come after gen and dun, uh, if they begin with an S. Then S becomes TS, which is just pronounced T. So even though it isn't true eclipses, it acts like eclipses. So, silen, which is a feminine noun meaning silo. Gen tylen, of the silo. But shal, which means sail, is a masculine noun, so just Jinshaw of the sale. And this is probably the only other time I think that I mentioned the dentals before dots thing. So remember that DTNLS, dentals before dots, even applies to words after sa. Um, since it's technically a combo word of i plus un. So even though sa doesn't actually end with an n, it kind of does because it contains the word un. So we're going to treat it as though it ends with an N. So we got cha, which means house, and it's sacha in the house. Cha starts with a T. So that's D, T, or S coming after an N. We don't lenite it. Now, you are going to lenite on the 
adjective after the object of gen, done, or sa. So, for example, far more, big man, but danar, war, for the big man. An exception to that is if the object is masculine and unlinitable at the same time. So, we've got rang, big, small class. Rang is a masculine noun, and it's unlinitable because it starts with an R, which you never linite. So, sarang, big, in the small class. Okay. You do want to linite on nominative feminine nouns after the singular article un, the. Now, just as a side note, um, this is an example of when we would want to be watchful for our dentals before dots rule, um, since un, the, ends with an N. So, as you can imagine, D, T, and S words won't be linited after un. Um, but let's get back to our main example. So, kai her, chair, but on hai her, the chair. Also, linite on genitive masculine nouns after the singular article un, the. This is also a time to watch out for the dentals before dots rule, because again, like in the last example, un ends with an N, so we won't linite words beginning with D, T, or S after. So, Mala, bag, but unwala, of the bag. Remember, we talked about genitives a little bit before, and they can be used in different ways. They are often described kind of as meaning of the, um, even though the words of the aren't in there. So just think of it like that for now. Okay, but in the previous two cases that we just talked about, if the noun begins with S plus a vowel, L, N, or R, then S will become TS, and only the T will be pronounced, kind of like in eclipses. So here's an example. Sredge is a feminine noun, which means street. Untraj, the street. Sagert is a masculine noun that means priest. Untagert, of the priest. We're going to also linite on the adjective after a nominative singular feminine noun. So, once again, let's use the chair. Unheiher, we already covered why kaiher becomes unheiher. So, it's a feminine noun meaning the chair. Unheiher, hegerha, the sturdy chair. So, chegerha, which means sturdy, we just lenite it. Also lenite on the adjective after a genitive singular masculine noun. So we've got unwala, which means of the bag. Um, again, mala is masculine. Unwala, since it's in the genitive, we will unite. Unwala we. Bui is yellow. It comes after the genitive singular masculine noun, so it's unwala we. Okay, so also unite on the adjective after a nominative plural noun if the noun ends with I plus a consonant or some consonants with no other vowel. Um, that's also called a word ending on a slender consonant. Whatever consonant that is that it ends on will be considered slender. But I wanted this guide to be kind of like a standalone guide, and if you hadn't heard of what a slender consonant is, if you're just reading through it, I wanted you still to be able to um, know what I'm talking about without me having to define that. Um, so either way, you want to look at it. So let's look at an example. We have the word ain, which means birds. Um, most of the time, words that, most or all of the time maybe, words that end in a slender consonant, otherwise known as I plus a consonant or some consonants, such as ain, will be masculine, but you don't really need to know that. Anyway, ain ends in I plus n we're going to add the word colorful, which is gotcha. So we need to lenite that to gotcha, ain gotcha. Also add shavu on the indefinite genitive singular noun, except f nouns, after a feminine nominative singular noun. So we've got the word scaf, which means scarf, and it's feminine. Um, but we want to describe it as a silk scarf. Genitive nouns act a lot like 
attributive adjectives, but they're not. They are another noun in the genitive that modifies the main noun. So silk is a noun, but we're using it to answer what kind of scarf it is. So scarf, hirde, hirde means silk, scarf hirde. Okay, the next situation where we're going to want to add shavu is on the indefinite, again, which means not having the article the, genitive noun after a masculine nominative plural noun if the masculine nominative plural noun ends with I plus a consonant or consonants. Again, that is also called a slender consonant ending. <coughs> So, for example, we have the word ishk. It's a masculine noun, and it's plural, and it ends in I, S, and C. Fits the bill so far. It means fishes. We've got nahishk. That means the fishes. Um, in this situation, you add an H before the word, um, after the n. I'm not sure the exact rules of, like, every time you do that, but... I'll learn them at some point and I'll share it with y'all. So, nehishk, the fishes. Well, we want to say the saltwater fishes. Saltwater is sala. It comes after that masculine nominative plural noun that ends in a slender consonant. So, we lenite and it becomes nehishk, hala. We also lenite on the indefinite genitive noun after a masculine genitive singular noun if the masculine genitive singular noun ends with I plus a consonant or consonants, a slender consonant. So for our example, we've got the word schlipper, which is masculine and it means slipper. Um, when we say of the slipper though, it becomes unschlipper. And notice that the ending slenderizes to become an IR ending which makes R a slender consonant ending. So any indefinite genitive noun modifying that that begins with a lenitable consonant will be lenited. So of the glass slipper, unschlipper, lenye. Now here comes kind of a lengthy list of exceptions about the last three rules I just gave about leniting indefinite genitives um, after other nouns in certain situations. So, except in the last three rules about lenition, if the indefinite genitive noun starts with an F. This is our first exception. So we have the word bujel, which means um, bottles, and it's masculine, and it ends with I plus a consonant, L. Um, so it's plural masculine noun that ends with I plus a consonant. Normally then, we would lenite any indefinite genitive noun that comes after that. But this case we won't because we want to say bottles of wine. Of wine is fiena. It starts with an F, so we won't lenite. Bujo fiena. Also not if the first noun is a part of the indefinite genitive noun. So for example, we've got the word kos, which is feminine and it means leg. Um, a table leg, kos board. A table leg. Kos is a part of board. It's a leg of a table. So we won't lenite. We also won't lenite if the indefinite genitive noun is modified. So we got the word jelu, feminine, and it means statue. Jelu marmor in, a pure marble statue. If we just wanted to say a marble statue, well, then that would be jelu warmer. But it's pure marble. The statue isn't pure, the marble is pure. So we end up not leniting it. Jelu marmor in. You're also gonna not add a shavu if the indefinite genitive noun is a living thing or any part of a living thing. So for example, color, which is masculine and it means collars it ends in I plus a consonant. So you'd think we'd not, but we want to say dog collars. A dog is a living thing. 
So it's color madra, not color wadra. Unless, here's an exception to the exception, <laughs> unless the indefinite genitive noun is a living thing, but not a person, and an appositive of the first noun. An appositive is a noun that further identifies another noun, yet remains equal to it. So before we get to an Irish example, I'm gonna give you like a really basic English example. So like, John, James's son, tried out for the baseball team. So the James's son there in parentheses is modifying John by describing and identifying him as James's son. But James's son is equal to John. You could even um, exchange one for the other. John tried out for the baseball team or James's son tried out for the baseball team. So for example, we have the word kark, which is feminine and it means hen. And kark, herky, a hen turkey. So it's not just any turkey, it's a hen turkey because it's a girl. We lenited turkey, even though it's a living thing, because it's being used as an appositive to kark, hen, to further modify it, but it's also a noun that is equal to it, even though it's in the genitive. So a hen laid eggs, a turkey laid eggs. You could really drop one for the other and it would still make sense. On the other hand, you go back up to the other example, dog collars, you could say, I bought some dog collars, but you can't drop one for the other. I bought collars, that would make sense. But I bought a dog, well that's not true, I bought dog collars. Okay, another time that you will not lenite an indefinite genitive noun after a qualifying noun of some other kind um, is after any abstract noun, which I think will almost always be feminine, but there might be an exception, I don't know. Okay, so we've got the word salchat, which is feminine and it means safety. Safety is an abstract noun, which means it's not something that you can feel or pick up or see or taste. It doesn't exist in the real world. It's more of a concept. So, salchakt via, food safety. Not salchakt via, because it comes after an abstract noun. Um, so, an exception to this exception is unless the indefinite genitive noun after the abstract noun is a verbal noun. So, for example, um, we've got kush, which is feminine, and it means cause or matter. Um, that's an abstract noun. It's not something we can pick up or see or taste or feel. So if we want to say a laughing matter, laughing, gaira, that is a verbal noun. But we will deny it after even this abstract noun because it's a verbal noun. Kush gaira. Okay, the next exception is that you're not going to deny it indefinite genitives after unspecified amounts. So for example, we have lynch, which is a feminine noun, which means some. It's an unspecified amount though. It's not saying exactly how much, it's just some. So lynch, plur, some flower. Okay, another exception is that you're not going to lenite the indefinite genitive noun if it is the word jilly or the word she. So, for example, we've got bull, which is a feminine fe feminine noun that means cow. Bull, she, she cow. And came, a feminine noun that means degree. Came, jli, a law degree. Also, do not lenite the indefinite genitive noun if it is the word blian, me, kukish, or shakten. So, for example, sira which is a feminine noun and it means vacation. Sira shaktanya, a week's vacation. Shaktanya is the genitive of the word shaktan, which means week. Kakish means a fortnight, I believe. Me means month and blian means year. Also, do not add a shavu if the indefinite genitive noun modifies and receives at the same time the action of a verbal noun. So, for my example here, I've got chumach, which is feminine, 
and it means driving. So chumach bus, bus driving. It's the word bus is modifying what kind of driving it is, chumach, the verbal noun, but it's also receiving the action contained within the verbal noun because the bus is being driven. Also, don't lenite um, the indefinite generative noun if it is the doer of the first noun. So, the, the doer or the creator of the first noun. So we've got the word plimp. That's a fun word. Um, it's feminine and it means a clap. So, plimp, tarny, a clap of thunder. Tarny is the genitive of thunder. The thunder is creating the clap. So we don't lenite. Also, do not lenite if the genitive noun is the object of a verbal noun that follows the preposition egg. So, as you probably or may know, I'm not sure, um, when a verbal noun follows the preposition egg, that's sort of the Irish way of forming like a continuous case. The Irish equivalent of adding ing to a verb in English. So, for example, we've got sketcho. It's a feminine verbal noun that means sketching. A sketcho, portraja, sketching a portrait. Um, sketcho, it follows egg, so we'll not lenite the object of the verbal noun's action there. An exception to this is in established phrases, such as egg flow, wash, dying. I think it literally means like finding death, but it's an established phrase and you do lenite. Okay, another exception. Do not lenite on genitive verbal nouns that modify another noun by describing what the noun is for. So, for example, we've got the word clar. It's masculine and it means boards, like boards of lumber or something. So, clar garha, cutting boards. Garha is a verbal noun here um, in the genitive and it means cutting. If you were to lenite that, it could create some confusion of meaning. So it could actually potentially change the intended meaning by turning the verbal noun into its own verbal adjective. So for example, clarjarha would mean hewn boards or boards that have been cut rather than cutting boards, boards for cutting. Okay, stick with me. I promise we're almost to the end of this string of exceptions. So. Also, do not lenite if the indefinite genitive noun is plural. So, for my example, I've got salad, which is masculine. Of the salad is untelage. It ends in I plus a consonant. So, you think, okay, masculine genitive noun that ends in I plus a consonant. We're going to lenite any indefinite genitive that comes after, but not in all cases, such as untelage. Pretty, that means of the potato salad, or literally of the salad of potatoes. Potatoes is plural. However, um, that rule only applies in standard Irish. Tr standard Irish, traditionally, an indefinite genitive plural is lenited unless it follows a collective noun. So, for example, untalage frati of the potato salad. That would be completely. Um, acceptable, except if you're probably doing like a test in standard Irish or something, I'm not sure. Okay, but, sra, that's a feminine noun, it's a collective noun because it means a series. Sra, shoppy, a chain of stores. So, um, it's a collective noun followed by an indefinite plural genitive, which means shops. We won't win I. Okay. Also, don't lenite the indefinite genitive noun after certain words. And it's just a list of words that you've got to memorize, and those words are acma, which means category, corla, which means advice, corporage, which means corporation, cogicta, which means company, erno, branch, foreign, group, feyamanacht, service, griwerakt, 
agency, um, Instituge, Institute, Ufig, Office, Ranog, which means department, Ren, which also means department, Scheme, Scheme, or Shadowvish, service. Um, so for example, Ticket, Ticket, but Ufig, Ticket, Ticket Office, don't lament. Yay, we're finally to the end of that long list of exceptions about indefinite genitives being lenited or not. There's still more rules of when to lenite though, um, but I want to get to that in a separate video because I want these to be like digestible little bits of video instead of one really long one. So I guess I'll see you in part two and join me there. Slime Gafol.